Hey everybody, welcome to the Salesforce for Everyone YouTube channel. Today we have a very special guest that we're bringing on and her name is Nicole. And the reason I wanted to bring her on is because she's been such an active and engaged participant of the Salesforce for Everyone Facebook group and I've sort of gotten to watch her journey as she went from not necessarily knowing a whole lot about Salesforce to passing her Salesforce administrator certification and she just had a lot of tenacity, a lot of drive, and you could tell that she was consistently focused on what her goal was in passing the certification exam. And I think she definitely has the highest test score that I have ever seen. So it, it's not a surprise because of all the work and preparation I saw her put into this. But when she actually posted her test score, I was sort of blown away because she had 100 in like half of the section. So. I thought it would be very valuable to the community here to bring her on and have her explain what is it that got her to the point she is today and how did she dominate this test. So uh, without further ado, uh, welcome to the channel, Nicole. Oh, thanks for having me. Lovely to speak to you. Yeah, absolutely. So let's, let's go ahead and jump right in and tell us a little bit about how did you decide that Salesforce was something that you were even remotely interested in? How did, how did you find out about it? Um, my husband told me about it. He uses it. He's not certified, but he uses it in, in his work. And I have got to stay with my children that they're um, much older now. And I wanted to get, um, want to get back into work, but also I wanted to get something I wanted to get my teeth into and that I found really interesting. Um, and he just said, have, have a look at it. I think, I think you'll like it, but have a look at it anyway. And so in February this year, um, I signed up to Trailhead and, you know, had a mooch around. And then I, I realized, actually, I was finding it more and more interesting. And it was, and it really grabbed me. Um, and then the lockdown happened. And uh, I thought, well, this is a good time to try and, uh, you know, get something under my belt. And, uh, yeah, I, went to, I, I was pleased that I found it interesting and engaging. And, uh, yeah, so I, I started from there, really. Excellent. Okay. So, so you sort of had someone around you who sort of made you aware of Salesforce. And I think for the majority of our audience, anyone who's watching this channel, they're probably aware of Salesforce to some degree. So in reality, they're, they're sort of where you were in this place where they know what Salesforce is, but a lot of them are probably thinking, do I really want to spend the time and effort to see where this could take me or even want to get this certification? Um, and I know so many people who start on this journey, and they spend a week or a couple of weeks studying and they're not progressing as fast as they had expected to or they wanted to. And so I guess what, what can you say to people who are starting out today and they're not really sure where this is gonna take them or if they should focus on it? How, how can they, number one, get started? What kind of material should they focus on? And then we can talk a little bit about how they can stay motivated to really finish this thing out. Um, well, I think, so you, you, when you sign up to Trailhead, that lets you obviously play around. And I think it's, it's, it's that that I just completely immersed myself in and did started with the, um, oh, what's the beginning admin or something like that. Yeah. Not the prepare for the mix, but I did okay. admin beginners. Okay. And, and it was, it was just doing, doing the challenges, achieving them. And actually I still didn't know what I was doing, but I was getting, I was, it, but I realized at the time it's getting me familiar with the screen mm -hmm. and that's the most important thing where to go where to even the first simple thing of what is set up where is it you know that's the beginning right. and so without realizing whilst I felt I was traipsing around without realizing it, it it that's familiarizing yourself so even though it's feeling really strange just keep doing those and and then uh, later on I found the material like focus on force that gave me more to read about to get my teeth into, but I couldn't have done that at the beginning with with Trailhead myself because it would have drowned me. And I, I wouldn't have known it wouldn't have made sense. I needed the screen and the visual to make sense. So I think getting into Trailhead and having a, a, a I say I play around with it. I needed the the Victor modules to be. I, I wasn't one to sort of go and make things up myself at the beginning because it just right. it was too confusing. So that 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 structure I liked. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and I I think that. That is sometimes, you know, one of the biggest hurdles for people getting started is they want it all today and, and they don't yes. want to go through the process. So they go through a week of study 
And then they see everyone posting on, you know, our Facebook group and everywhere else. And they're saying you need to do trailhead and then you need to do practice exams. And if you jump into the practice exams too early, it's, it's going to overwhelm you because you're going to feel so, you know, incomplete. Like, you just, yeah, you're, you're inadequate at that point. Um, so I, I think that's great advice to sort of understand what the practice exams are and what purpose they serve, but you don't need to be taking practice exams right away. First, immerse yourself, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. and stay inside a trailblazer until you get comfortable, until you're getting some of that confidence that maybe you feel lost and maybe it feels chaotic, but you're learning all of these small mm -hmm. little detail skills that are going to scaffold into something much greater. Yeah. And I, I deliberately didn't look at uh, practice exams till so I thought I would be ready for the exam, which I knew I, I, I didn't give myself six months. I wasn't necessarily one of these people that thought I'm going to do it in two, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I actually need, I mean, first of all, I was doing an hour a day. So I, I you know, I thought, oh, that will be all right. But I, I needed to ramp it up. So I, I actually was ending up doing about two lots of hour and a half a day. Okay. So my three hours was broken. Okay. Um, but it was only when I was ready to take that I felt I would be nearly ready. How much do I know if someone threw a question at me? Mm -hmm. I only did the practice exams at that stage because I, I didn't want to do them too soon to, um, to, to feel like a failure. Sure, right, right. Because that can be one of the biggest sort of demotivators is sitting yeah, down for a practice yeah. exam and making a 30 on it is going to make you feel like it's never going to happen. Um, well, that's great. Yeah. So how do you... How did you keep yourself motivated over that? Because this can take, to, to your point, this can take, it can take two months if you want to rush it and, and just dive in and do, you know, five hours a day, you can do it pretty quickly. But for most of us who have jobs and we have lives and we have children and things like that, it's going to take three or four months at a minimum to get this first certification. If you're, if you're sort of molding trailhead and study into your life, um, so what, what do you say to people? I mean, it's so easy for us to, to spend a week or spend two weeks staying focused on studying, but how, how did you keep yourself focused over months and months of time to, to know that I'm not gonna throw in the towel, I'm not gonna give up, I'm gonna make sure I pass this test? Um, I, my motivation really is whilst I wanted to get, you know, I want to get a, a, a job and, and I, but I want to earn money and I want to do that seriously and mm -hmm. I've got time to actually dedicate that and I don't have to get back to school runs and I don't have to do, I can actually, you know, go and do that, that, you know, should the chance arise. So I, I thought well, I'm not going to get this unless I get the certification mm -hmm. and this is, this is a good way. I'm interested and it does make money mm -hmm. um, when you get into it you know so it, that that to be honest that was my motivation and with um you know your your facebook group as well you know i get up in the morning and just seeing the chat with people exchanging ideas and at the very beginning the, the questions were just way over my head what is anyone talking about and you 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 can also whilst you may not join in with the question mm -hmm. i could start to understand it and go ah i know the answer or when somebody gave the answer i can see why and that progress so it was engaging with that um, but the motivation was, I want to work in this. <laughs> that's, I think that's a great answer. And, and it's really interesting because we do understand, I think most people understand the effects of social media and how influential and impactful it is sort of on us on a day-to-day -day basis because we're absorbed into this world where we just see these things over and over again and it sort of becomes what we think about and how we feel. Um, and I, I think the fact that you mentioned, you know, going into Facebook, whether it's our group or another group, it, you know, as long as you're absorbing and sort of immersing yourself into that information, to your point, it sort of gives you a, a tracking for where you are. You know, on day one, you're going to see people posting in the, the Facebook group and you're not going to understand what they're talking about. But a month in, you're going to start to think, I think I could answer that question. Maybe I'll let somebody else answer it just to see if I was right. But but I think I could answer yeah, that question. Yeah. Um, and I think that's huge and it, and it builds confidence at the same time. Um, and then I think I look at things and I, I remember mentioning this a while back, one of my like first videos is that I'm a strong advocate of taking maybe one social media platform out of your life and adding LinkedIn as a social media platform. And it's not, you know, I know it's not fun and I know it's not flashy and it's not what we typically think of when we think of social media, 
But imagine if you replaced Instagram or Twitter with LinkedIn and all you use LinkedIn for was immersing yourself into Salesforce groups, Salesforce related people. And now you're replacing this flashy, look at me on vacation, you know, look at what I'm doing, look at what I'm marketing. And you've replaced that entire subset of your life with Salesforce professional development. And I think just immersing yourself in that way, to your point, can, can keep you so focused on what your goals are instead of looking at what other people's dreams and goals are, you can sort of focus on your own. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's just why groups are really good and, and to, to engage with them and listen. And I find them very inclusive as well. There's not a, you know, and, and when it's out of your depth, it's, it, that's, that's fine too, because you, you don't need to have to answer, but you can still mm-hmm. see what's going on. And I think that I feel um, it was never my place not to be there, even at the part of the journey that I was on. It was always, and, and it's so helpful as well. When, when I mean, I, I think that's the whole point of your thing as well. So yeah. it's, it's just Salesforce is a, is a good community because you can share it. So, so going from here, um, I, I know you talked about you used Trailhead uh, primarily. You used yeah. Focus on Force for your practice exams. Were there any other materials at this point that you would recommend to someone that you felt like gave you an, an edge um, when you were moving through? Um, for me, focus and force was my light bulb moment. Oh my word, this is the, the clarity is marvelous and all this kind of thing. So, but as I said earlier, I, I, I couldn't have started with that. So, to right. bring that in later is what I did. And then the prepare your prepare for your admin surge on the trail mix, mm-hmm. um, that great long one. I did that before doing Focus on Force. Right. And again, I didn't sort of realize, well, I was going through them, going through them, learning mm-hmm. more. But when I went all through the topics again, Focus on Force, I went back and did all that trail again. Um, wow. uh, maybe not the very easy bits at the beginning, but the, just to see the streams and to see where you're going, it made much more sense. So I did, I did that twice. Okay. Um, and. I would, uh, yeah, and then d- dipped into my wheel a bit. And, mm-hmm. But I bought his practice test before I was getting rid of the exam. I bought his practice, yeah. he does three. Um, and that was good. So okay. I, and I scored well on those. Perfect. So I think, that is, <laughs> I think that is a huge amount of sort of information, advice, and guidance for people on this Salesforce certification journey. So let's talk about you and sort of what, where are you headed next? So you got your certification. Um, what are next steps for you? It's just, it's just sending it all out there and trying to get, um, just some connections and getting on the first rung of the ladder, which is, is easier said than done. May I say as well, before anyone thinks that, although my husband works in it, he didn't help me with one job. <laughs> he doesn't know he, the admin exam is way over that. And I threw him a couple of questions and he went, I have no idea. So this, <laughs> it's what's on my own. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm just going to see. And because once you're on the rung of the ladder, the only way is up, but it's just getting on there first. So I will be hustling. Yes. Well, I have no doubt that you will bring the same drive, motivation, tenacity to moving on into this next phase. And if it's all right with you, uh, we will put your LinkedIn profile in the video description. That way, if anyone wants to connect with Nicole um, to hear more about her story, um, or if you have any opportunities available in the Metro London area, then obviously we want to make that available. So uh, check out the video description. We'll have links to everything, uh, all of the course materials uh, that we talked about today. Um, We'll make sure we put those there for you. Um, And thank you so much for being on, Nicole. Oh, thank you. It's lovely to speak to you. Thank you.